I love this recipe, especially midweek, whenever I have any leftover mashed potato or mashed sweet potato leftover because you can use either. Um, it's a great way of using it up and it takes about, mm, about 15 minutes to make. So join me while I make one of my Clodagh's summer suppers. So I've cooked my sweet potatoes in their skins with a little bit of water. You could steam them or you could roast them, whatever you want. And then I've got my fresh sage, flour and Kerrygold Irish butter. So the first thing to start with is peeling your sweet potato. And as I said earlier, you could use regular potato too. I love sweet potatoes. Um, you know, for the taste of them, the colour, um, and also they're very good for you. So once this is peeled with a masher, you just want to mash them up. So what you want to do is fold in the flour until you get a dry consistency and that you can work them then into a nice sausage shape. At this stage then I start using it by hand because I'm putting in tiny little bits um, because you don't want to add too much flour because then it becomes too dry. There's so many different variations you can do with potato dumplings like if I'm using plain potato I might add in you know Dublin or cheddar or you know, some good quality hard cheese grated into it and they're actually gorgeous as well if you want to drop them in soup like last summer I made a beautiful beetroot soup actually the recipe for that is up on my website um, and I did beetroot and fennel soup and then I fried these off separately and then I just dropped them about four dumplings into everybody's soups and it looked so beautiful it was kind of like a little surprise when you went in there to get the sea potato dumpling so nice And then cut it into four. So I'm making enough for four people. So one, two, three, four. This is also another one of my, I guess, kitchen utensils that I kind of can't live without. It's um, a dough cutter or a shaper, um, but also fantastic for, you know, taking all the flour that sticks to your board in a really fast way. <laughs> so I washed my hands to get all the excess dough out and then I've washed them in flour again. So they're lovely and cold. So I've washed them in cold water so they're not too hot so they don't melt the dough. And then I'm gonna pop this down on the board and then very lightly, I'm gonna roll it out. If you don't have one of these, don't worry about it. You can just use like a regular knife like this. You just pop them onto a floured plate because then they're going to go into the fridge to chill just for like 15 minutes. So you can definitely make these ahead. So even if you're um, you know, having people for supper over on Friday night, you get these made on a Thursday night. Or as I said, they're kind of like my midweek supper staple. Okay, then when you've got them all rolled and shaped into the little dumplings, they look so nice. Come in and have a look. I'm going to clink fillet them, or saran wrap them. <laughs> So I'm just going to leave those in the fridge for a minimum of a half an hour just so that they firm up really nicely. So while my sweet potato dumplings are setting in the fridge, I'm going to get my sage butter made. So you just need a fresh sage and some really good quality butter like a Kerrygold. Salted, I use salted butter when I'm making my sage butter. You just pluck the leaves off the stalks and then use your stalk then for your, your broth. And then when you're chopping your herbs like this, you know, Mold them into a little bundle with one hand and then with the other hand use the large part of the knife, the nearest part to the handle and start chopping and as you're chopping walk your fingers back, you should just be able to see your knuckles and your knuckles will stop your fingers from being clipped by the knife. Bring it all together again and back over again. I need to go over to my frying pan, I'm going to melt down my butter and then I'm going to add in the sage and lightly crisp it a little bit for that lovely texture on the soft dumplings. And 
taking my dumplings that have been setting in the fridge. And I want to pop each one of them into the butter. Whenever I'm doing a starter, I always make sure that the starter is something that I can either have on the plates already before everybody comes in, or else I do it in platters, or else maybe it's a soup, and I'll bring up the whole casserole dish with the soup in it. But I always think that the starter is something that should be really easy like to serve to people. So I'm gonna fry these in the butter for about two minutes on each side until they're nice and they've got a nice golden color on them. And basically, because the potato is cooked already, I'm really just cooking through the flour and adding texture to it and getting the flavor of the butter and the sage into the dumplings. And look, the sage is already like attaching. Mm. For me, this is real like soul food. I mean, I call it Irish soul food because, you know, I cook these with, I cook these a lot with, you know, regular potatoes and we do have really good potatoes in Ireland. And you've held together so nicely. Thank you, dumplings. They really are like golden pillows. Like they'll be a little bit crunchy on the outside. Um, and on the inside, they should be soft and pillow-like. And the gorgeous earthiness of the sage and salty, gorgeous butter. So the trick is, is to kind of stand over them, you know, for the five minutes that it takes to cook them. Because you really want to get all of that gorgeous flavor of the butter and the sage all the way around in every part of the dumpling. And you also want to get that nice crispy texture. So I turn up the heat a little bit just before I take them off, just to make sure I've got that crispiness. The smell is so good. I've got my two dishes warmed. I actually made enough at the beginning in the recipe for four, um, but I've only got two for supper. So I, what I've done is I've taken the rest of the dough, I've popped it into a bowl, I've covered it with cling film, and that's going to be my sneaky supper on my own during the week. So just spoon the dumplings out. Yeah, spoon them out. And then after that, what I'm going to do is pour all this lovely sage butter over it. So the recipe for this is in a link below. If you wanted to go and make a dessert to serve up with this, what would be really lovely would be my raspberry and coffee pavlova with Kerrygold Irish cream liqueur. Um, you'll find the recipe and the video for that um, back at my YouTube channel. Cut back a little bit of the fresh sage. So, what did you say? You want me to taste it? Okay. Just for you. Oh my god, the smell is just delicious. Um, Mmm. Oh. Glass of wine, please. <laughs>